Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Saudi-led coalition launches raids on Yemen. Seven killed in Sudan's anti-coup protests. Israeli forces attempt expulsion of Sheikh Jarrah family. And UK ministers hold key vote on policing bill. In our first story today, at least 14 people have been killed in airstrikes by the Saudi-led military coalition on Yemen. Al Masira TV reported that the attacks took place on January 17th and 18th in the capital of Sana'a. Casualties are expected to rise with several people still buried under the debris. The airstrikes followed an attack by the Houthi rebels on Abu Dhabi a day prior. At least three people were reported killed in the suspected drone attack on an oil facility near the main international airport. Houthi spokesperson Brigadier General Yahya Sari stated on Monday that the group had conducted a successful military operation using ballistic missiles and drones. The attack came just days after the Houthis seized an Emirati ship in the Red Sea, claiming that it was carrying weapons. The group has warned civilians in the UAE to stay away from vital installations for their own security. While Saudi Arabia has been attacked previously, Monday was the first attack on the UAE confirmed by both sides. The UAE is part of the Western-backed Saudi-led military alliance, waging a war in Yemen since 2015. According to the Yemen Data Project, the coalition carried out over 7,200 airstrikes in the country in 2021 alone. At least 70 civilians were killed. The military attacks have been accompanied by a crushing land and sea blockade. Now, in its seventh year, the war was estimated to have killed 377,000 people by the end of 2021. Four million people have been displaced internally and 16 million are at risk of starvation. In our next story, at least seven people were killed by security forces in Sudan during protests on January 17th. Thousands of people had gathered in the capital of Khartoum in rejection of the military coup. Local reports indicate the use of tear gas and live bullets in different parts of the capital. The violence on Monday brings the death toll in Sudan's anti-coup protests to 71. The attacks took place just days after similar violence against protesters on January 13th. Wounded people leaving a hospital in eastern Khartoum were detained by plainclothes officer on January 15th. The country's resistance forces have continued to mobilize under the slogan no negotiation, no compromise, and no power sharing. The Sudanese Professionals Association, or the SPA, has declared a public strike and civil disobedience on January 18th and 19th. Resistance forces have rejected talks with the military and are demanding complete civilian control. However, centrist and right-wing political parties in the country have agreed to negotiate with the junta. The UN mission has reportedly also initiated talks with different groups in the country. The resistance committees organizing the protests have stated that they will present their joint position in a political charter. The Sudanese Communist Party also released a statement saying that it rejected any partnership with the military. This extends to any attempt to return to the situation prior to the coup, including the August 2019 constitutional document. In our next story, Israeli occupation forces attacked the homes of the Saliha family in Sheikh Jarrah on January 17th. The demolition was part of an attempt to forcibly dispossess the Palestinian family. Local media reported that Israeli forces, accompanied by bulldozers, had laid siege to the house on Monday. The family's belongings were removed and they were forced to step out. The house was going to be handed over to illegal settlers. However, the Saliha family set a fire outside their home in rejection of the expulsion order. They then climbed on the roof, threatening to self-immolate themselves and the house if the occupation forces proceeded. Palestinians who had gathered in the area to support the family were also attacked and at least two people were arrested. With members of the family protesting on their home's roof, occupation forces proceeded to destroy the nursery they owned. The Jerusalem municipality first seized the Salia family's home in 2017 under the pretext of building a school. Their expulsion was authorized by an occupation court in 2020. They are awaiting a verdict on an appeal against the order. Local media have reported that the occupation forces offered the family an eight-month extension to sign a paper stating that they would become tenants. 
They have rejected this offer. The Salias are among hundreds of Palestinians facing ethnic cleansing by way of displacement in Sheikh Jarrah. And now for a final story, we look at the latest on the police, crime, sentencing and courts bill in the United Kingdom. The widely opposed legislation was put up for another vote in the House of Lords on January 17th. In a positive development, several last-minute amendments brought by the Tory government have been defeated. This includes giving police expanded powers to stop protests deemed too noisy or disruptive. The measure was defeated with a majority of 261 to 166. The ministers also voted 238 to 171 to remove the power to impose noise conditions on protests. The government had also tried to criminalize a protester if they interfered with the use or operation of key national infrastructure. It also tried to implement expanded stop and search powers, including quote-unquote suspicionless stops and searches. Both measures were defeated by opposition ministers. Finally, an amendment was introduced to make it illegal for protesters to lock on to things. This was also rejected. Moreover, the House voted to scrap the Vagrancy Act of 1824 and, and has also declared misogyny as a hate crime. Meanwhile, the policing bill will now head back to the House of Commons. The legislation was the subject of sustained protests in 2021 led by groups including Sisters Uncut. While Monday's votes were key, several problematic aspects remain in the bill. This includes the criminalization of unauthorized encampments, which will put gypsy, Roma and traveler communities at further risk. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.